Wisconsin Broadcasters Association Hall of Famer Bob Berry ruled Milwaukee's airwaves in the 60s and 70s. He spoke with countless musicians and celebrities over the years. Bob collected remarkable recordings of these encounters, which he's now sharing with the public. Here's Bob. This man set a Guinness World Record as the most watched man on television. Maybe you remember David Hasselhoff from the soap opera The Young and the Restless. He played Dr. Snapper Foster. He was Michael Knight on The Knight Rider. The girls loved him as lifeguard Mitch Buchanan in Baywatch. And he also starred in musicals Chicago and The Producers. He was a judge on America's Got Talent. And David was a contestant on Dancing with the Stars. He and Kim Johnson were the first to be eliminated. Hoff's biggest musical claim to fame was a huge success in concerts, but did not make it on the radio. Did you ever hear of Looking for Freedom? I've been looking for freedom. I've been looking so long. One of the hottest television stars in the country is on the air with us right now, David Hasselhoff, Knight Rider. Plays uh, Knight on uh, the Knight Rider program, which is kind of, I guess, the modern-day Lone Ranger. Wouldn't you uh, agree with that, David? Yeah, it seems that I'm taking on that task, a man without a mask. <laughs> and uh, David also is a singer. I don't know how many of you know about that, but uh, you catch him on television every once in a while. You do a little little number here and there, but uh, now he has an album on, and he also has a single, Do You Love Me? Or we'll get to that single uh, a little bit later on after we uh, talk to David about uh, Knight Rider and some of the things that he's... Uh, uh, been doing. Uh, you, you know, you started off, you were judged as uh, for your physical attractiveness when you first started out in show business, right? Well, I think so. I, I, I started off on a uh, soap opera called The Young and the Restless, which kind of geared towards all American looking people. And I think that was initially what got me the job because I was pretty green as a television actor. I did a lot of theater, but not too much uh, television. Have you good looks ever gotten in the way of uh, jobs or relationships? Oh, sure, they always get in the way, you know. I mean, it just seems that sometimes, you know, you're too tall, you're too short, you're too ugly, you're too pretty. You know, when I met my fiancé, is now my wife, she says, I'll go out with six foot four Ken dolls. You know, so it's, <laughs> at times it, it helps and at times it's a detriment. Where did you meet uh, Catherine uh, Hicklin? Uh, she was on a series called Texas in uh, New York City, which is no longer on the air, and uh, they were having a party, a uh, promotional party, and uh, with a lot of soap stars, I was up there, um, presenting on the uh, Daytime Emmy Awards, and um, she happened to be at the party, and uh, I immediately asked her to go to Acapulco, and she said, forget it. And so about a year later, it took me a year of phone calls, because I was here on the West Coast, and she was uh, on the East Coast in New York, and we finally ended up uh, together a year later. And she does a couple of songs with you on your album. Yeah, the whole thing stemmed from an episode of Night Rider called um, Let It Be Me, which aired last year, where... I went undercover as a rock star, and Catherine got the role of the uh, of the girl in it. And uh, I said, well, let's put this show together, take the dailies, which are our day's work, make a little music video, and we'll have a demo tape and talk to Silver Blue CBS Records, and they signed us. One of my reasons I, I got into singing, I mean, I, I, one of the reasons I'm trying to go on the road, actually, I've, I've just put together a rock tour, is that, that need for the interaction between an audience and myself. Yeah, how close are you going to uh, come to Milwaukee? I don't know. I think we're probably, gonna, you know, I used to go to the Wisconsin State Fair. Is that right? Milwaukee. Yeah, I went there many times. In fact, I kept saying, I, I keep using that analogy. I said, that's where I want to play. I want to play the fair, the Milwaukee State Fair, because I lived in Chicago. I used to go over there for the race and all the animals, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I used to see Seals and Craw perform. And so I just, uh, the, the, the people who are promoting Prince right now are, ne are in negotiations with my manager to promote me. So at this point, um, uh, it's everything is just about to happen. I know we're going on tour. I think it'll be sometime in June, July, and August. Yeah, this would be a good time to book the fair too. I think they start, you know, making their announcements now, yeah. around. Yeah, right. Sure. Where uh, where do you film uh, Night Rider? Uh, we film Night Rider at Universal Studios in uh, Universal City, which is right outside of Hollywood. But um, we, we're all only on the the lot one day a week. The rest of the time we're out uh, in the field all over Los Angeles, mostly up north. Yeah, there's certainly a lot of uh, scenes that are not uh, studio-type scenes in, in your show. Yeah. Uh, I talked to Morgan Brittany a few days ago. And, oh, he's uh, my b b good friend. Yeah, I know, because uh, Jack Gill works with you. Sure, uh, he was just here a few minutes ago. Her, uh, Morgan Brittany's husband, Jack Gill, and... Uh, he's all uh, a good driver and does all the jumps and keeps 
Ghost Knight Rider um, flying with a, with a heaviness, a heavy emphasis on safety. Yeah. Where is he in the car? Uh, I know we don't see. Oh, him. that's something you guys got to find out yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really divulge that information, but um, we have a good time. He's taught me a lot of driving, and I've already gotten the bug, and I get to do. He throws me a, about two or three 180s a week, and maybe a little 360. And, Actually, I did a jump this year that when the, everyone found out about not, not too many people were happy. You were going to imagine. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, right. Uh, I just got to mention one more thing because uh, I think I think it's important. Uh, everybody looks at you and says, boy, he's making a lot of money. He's successful and a night rider, and he's got an album and a single. And But uh, David Hasselhoff does a lot of work with children, young children who are uh, sick and dying in hospitals all over the country. And uh, he frequently uh, invites the terminally ill child to spend a day with him on the Knight Rider set. Uh, does this happen quite often? Are you able to do that quite often? Well, we just had one yesterday. I wrapped Knight Rider yesterday and said, kind of a nice way to go out. We had a little boy come in, and he was terminal. We've had, believe it or not, 32 kids come this year. Mm. And every one of them have been terminal. That's got to be a... Some are still with us and some aren't. But, it's got to be an emotional uh, thing for you to see these kids like that, huh? It's incredible, it's man. It's incredible. It really is incredible to see how much they love Michael Knight and Knight Rider. Yeah. And it's invariably a very emotional experience. I've never seen so many kids have so much courage, you know. It, puts your, it keeps everything in perspective when you're complaining about a 14-hour day or a, or some problem with a script when you see some kid come in and you give him a little Knight Rider car and the kid lights up like a Christmas tree. Right. Well, continue your success, and uh, congratulations to you, David. Right. You've got a, a long, long successful career ahead, and let's listen to uh, David Hasselhoff's uh, new single called Do You Love Me? Okay. Thank you very much. I'll see you at the fair. Okay, David. I hope so. Okay, bye-bye. Hi, this is David Hasselhoff, alias Night Rider, right here with Bob Berry. Bob Berry. Thank you for listening to Bob Berry's Unearthed Interviews. Be sure to subscribe and rate our podcast on iTunes or wherever you find your podcasts. You can find all the episodes at WisconsinBroadcastingMuseum.org. Check out Bob Berry's book, Rock and Roll Radio Milwaukee. Book sale proceeds support Angels Kids Fund and Donate Life Wisconsin. The preceding program was made possible by a generous contribution from Terry Bond.